Hello everyone, welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another indie horror spotlight. I have with us today, he is an actor, and he plays Older Joe, I guess we would call him. <laughs> yep. And the movie that's out right now on Amazon Prime is called The Mummy Murders. I had with us today, Jason Scarborough. Jason, welcome to the horror realm, my friend. Thank you for having me in the realm. I appreciate you being patient with me, sir. It's, pl- it's a pleasure, my friend. Listen, technology sucks, man. It really does. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't suck, but when it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. When it doesn't work, it, it's a painted ass. A yes, painted so. ass. All right, so you are playing the um, the killer in the, in the Mummy movie. So tell us a little bit about your character. Well, I'll, I'm going to correct you. I'm not a killer. I'm an artist. So if you've an seen artist. the movie, yes. you haven't seen it yet, I'm an artist. I make I make art. But uh, for the sake of those watching this, yes, I'm the I'm the baddie. I'm the I'm the killer. Um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, very interesting uh, role to, to dig my teeth into. So yes, that was me. And so, so tell us a little bit about Joe. Who is she? Uh, Joe? He is just your um, um, average male that happens to have a, a desire to create art in a very unique way. Um, some might call it murder. I call it mummifying. So um, he, uh, we get to first meet Joe um, sitting down in, in a cafe and beginning to tell his story. Uh, no spoiler, because you learn this pretty early on, but but someone has um, taken the credit or received the credit for my creation, and I need to set the record straight. Um, so yeah. Now, when I talked to Colin, um, the director, he said that he had you in mind for this role. Um, mm-hmm. Now, when you saw the script, what did you think? It's intimidating because it's it's, and this is meant as a compliment. It, this is it is. Quentin Tarantino style dialogue. I had pages upon pages upon pages of dialogue. And uh, I've worked with Colin before. He's a great director. Uh, and he's always given me the lead way to kind of take the character where I wanted to go. But still, when you see, you know, that many pages of words upon words upon monologues, um, it's a little intimidating at first. Um, but yeah, after the first solid read through, I knew even though I was going to audition for the character, um, I knew it was one I, I definitely wanted to get a hold of. Now, is this your first time playing a killer in a movie? This, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I guess you say this is the first time I've, I've played the, the killer, someone that's uh, a little bit darker. You know, I've been doing this for the better part of 12 years. And, you know, I've done the action hero. I've done the, the, the love interest. But uh, this is the first time I got to uh, uh, delve into the mind of, uh, of a serial now, so it was a little more challenging. Like you say, you, you've been the action hero. You've been the good guy. You've been the one on the other side. Was it a little bit harder to now flip the script and now be this the minute serial killer? Um, I I don't want to scare anybody off and say no, because I've been... <laughs> <laughs> the, the day and age we live in, when you can't help but watch a god-awful amount of datelines or... or um, um, you know, documentaries on, on serials and things of that nature. It's something that it's in front of our face 24-7, whether we want it to or not. As an actor, this is a role you you don't realize you're studying to get um, by getting into other characters like the action hero of a love interest. Um, so all the preparation that goes into those type of roles, once you get to something like this, you still prepare, but then you have the, the freedom to just Go as deep, go as dark as you want to. Um, and no one can really frown at you because you can just blame it on the character. Hey, it wasn't me. It was no. <laughs> this is what you do in it, the character. So, yeah, definitely went through some, uh, some dark places to, to bring Joe out. Yeah, the Joe definitely goes in some dark places. Now, do you do any research on serial killers or how their behaviors, their, their, their speech pattern? Did you do any of that? Well, honestly, years ago, um, Again, I was probably preparing for it before I even realized it. I, I was in a my day job um, selling mattresses, which is, you know, could very easily create a serial killer if you don't 
uh, watch. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but while I had that time, I was able to watch documentaries, watch the 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 the, the bios on all the different uh, John Wayne Gacy's and the, the Mansons and the you you name it. So I had already seen a lot of those. But honestly, I think if you go into a character like this with too much of that next to you, then you just become a character. So I pulled little things from from stuff that I'd watched and even studied through the years. But in the end, I, it just came down to me being present in that moment, delivering the, the dialogue. And, and, and then like I said, with Colin giving me that freedom, I was able to go wherever that character needed to go um, in, the, in the moment. So it was a lot of fun. I can imagine. I mean, it, I can imagine it would be, I don't know, maybe like some horror fan. I've never acted before in a movie anyway. But um, I can imagine it would be fun, but at the same time, a little scary being, you know, a serial killer or being a killer in a movie because you have to get yourself into that mental space where that dark space and like when do you turn that off well luckily for me um the location we we filmed at and um i apologize i'm not sure where where you're based out of but here i'm in baltimore okay down here in south texas um for any of those that might watch this uh, i'm in san antonio and we were just right up the road uh, kind of in the bulberty area so local uh, people will know what I'm talking about. So it's about maybe an hour drive, hour and a half drive from home. So luckily for me, at the end of the day, once the makeup comes off, the wardrobe comes off, you just kind of get in the car and you've got plenty of time to decompress. Because I'm a father, you know, married, I have a six-year-old. So the last thing you want to do is, you know, come in, you know, honey, I'm home. And like, you're still in, in Joe. So luckily I had plenty of time to just decompress. But with any role, the, the action hero, the love interest, or for the serial killer, I pride myself on being able to go into that character so far, you know, that it does take a little time to, to get out of that skin. Now I'm not one of those that's going to stop off at the store and still be in that character, but it, it does, it does stay with you. And it did take me a good couple of weeks um, after we wrapped filming to just really not think like Joe when I was watching TV or, <laughs> or interacting with them. Uh, people themselves so, all right so how do you go from working in a mattress store to acting that's actually a funny story um and again if anybody watches this uh in the south texas san antonio area here in the next week or two um there's a uh, film festival coming up on the 28th um that um i might swing by but that's how i got my start so um, sitting there selling mattresses, daydreaming about being an actor. I'd always wanted to be an actor. I, I acted a little through high school. I've always written stuff. I've always wanted to perform. And honestly, um, in serial, everything comes back to being a serial killer. In serial killer fashion, I started just stalking people online that were in the business. And I started noticing a lot of them were going to be going to this certain film festival. And I showed up and stood in the room until I kind of recognized the face and went over and I introduced myself and, and I met a couple of uh, key people and then the rest is rest is history and actually a gentleman that I met at that festival 12 13 years ago um, I've worked with here and there um, through the years but I'm actually wrapping on his first feature within the next month or so and that'll be out later this year uh, around Christmas time so yeah for those you know kiddies out there with a dream you know just you got to get out there and you know Pound the pavement, uh, to use a phrase from, from my time. Yeah. You, you definitely have to do that. You definitely do. Yeah. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Now, yeah. now he, you've also done a little bit of writing and producing as well? Uh, a, a little bit. There's a couple of credits to my name out there on IMDb. Um, so I did write a, a feature with a, a colleague, one that I met at the at film festival by the name of Mark Cantu. Um, so I did write a, a feature. And I've, I've dabbled in shorts here or there. And, uh, Truth be told, about six feet that way in my desk, there's a whole stack of stuff that I've been writing that maybe one day in the near future we'll, we'll see light. Is it more challenging writing and producing than it is acting? There are two different coats. Um, the, the writing, the writing is the writing is fairly easy if you 
embrace it. The hard part is then seeing what you wrote and your vision at three in the morning that went on to paper kind of get dissected and switched around once once it's out there in um, uh, other actor and actresses' hands. So uh, I'd say they're both equal. The producing route, I wasn't too big of a fan of. Um, it was a, a necessary, I guess you'd say, evil at the time. But uh, I really enjoy the writing. It's very therapeutic for me. And then, obviously, if I can delve into a character and not be myself for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, that's always that's always fun as well. Now, now, when it came to the Mummy murders, was it a tough shoot for you, or or did it fly by pretty quickly? It actually went by way too easy and way too quick to the point that once we got to the end of it, um, I was you know, sad to see it go, you know. Uh, I filmed for a solid week in January of last year, had an amazing crew, amazing cast um, to work with uh, that day as well. But those four days I was on set, I blinked and it was all over and it was time to go back to to reality, to the day job for a little bit. Um, So interesting stories and, and, and tidbits while being on set. But yeah, it just, it, it flew by. And I, I, I think that's, one, the the crew that we had there were spot on getting lights in place, getting mics in place, getting everything where it needs to be. And then also the pages and pages of dialogue. You know, you hear the words action, the lights come on, you lose yourself into the, that dialogue. And the next thing you know, they say cut and eight hours have gone by, you know. So. Yeah. Now, have you always been a horror fan? Uh, yeah, I'm, I've been a horror fan. Um, Mom and Dad will attest to this. The uh, the first movie I was ever taken to um, was The Shining, a drive-in theater here in, <laughs> in San Antonio. So maybe subconsciously, that's always been in me. Uh, so much so now, I'm I'm slowly introducing my my six-year-old to that. But I I love film and movies in general. Um, horror, it, it's it's a uh, it has its place with me, but there's there's certain types of horror that I like versus other ones. Um, but yeah, I'm an equal opportunity enjoyer. And that's one thing I, I mean, I've said before. One thing about horror is horror is its own genre, but there's so many different subgenres in horror that there's something out there for everyone. Um, yeah, it, it, it truly is. And again, not to we all have our own opinions. I'm not a huge fan of over the top gore horror but then again there's you know a place for it where i'll see something and i'm like yeah that's a bit gory but that works you know um to, to age my myself here i mean obviously i already said the shining i was a big fan of howling growing up you know anything with, with the old practical effects of bubbles and, and things making yes. people's face pop uh, um american werewolf in london you've seen that as a small child that leaves a, a mark on you as well like my my sisters would attest to but but yeah i mean horror like you said there's so many different sub genres of it um it's very interesting now, th- now this is my first year into doing this channel and even you know talking to indie horror and it was the first time i introduced actually one of your co-stars of destiny soria and she yes. was one of my first interviews and he was talking about you know san antonio san antonio texas has this and then over time, I keep hearing people say San Antonio, Texas, and then I had no idea that San Antonio, Texas, has such a big indie filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, that's it's it's interesting because uh, geographically, there's you know there's Austin, and, and Austin keeps it weird. But uh, uh, if you drive just a little bit further south down here in San Antonio and, and South Texas, maybe you know if, if you're going all the way down to the valley to to Laredo or back up to to Corpus. I believe there's a, an immense pool of talent that's down here that, you know, just maybe doesn't always get the eyes on it that it needs to. Um, every now and then there'll be a, a someone that just kind of rises to the surface and, and we praise them and we appreciate them. But um, I'm hoping, um, you know, within the next, you know, who knows, a couple of years, decades, who knows, that there, there'll be a little bit more big of a, you say Hollywood, but at least a bigger footprint when it comes to art, film. Um, all the creative talent that we have down here. So um, that's the nice thing, though, about actors. And I say this often: is we have no shelf life. 
you know, I'll disappear for 10 years and I'll pop back up in 35 years, you know, already, well, not gray, but maybe the beard would be gray <laughs> and I'll find work in something else. So, but yeah, definitely down here in South Texas, there's a, a, a lot of talent waiting to be tapped. And I've been all throughout Texas. I've been to Houston. I've been to Dallas. I've been to Fort Worth. I've been to Plano, Killeen. All throughout Texas, but I have not hit San Antonio, Texas, which is outrageous because I'm a huge sports fan, and I, and, yeah. and 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 the Spurs are my favorite basketball team. I'm surprised I haven't been to San Antonio. I hear San Antonio is amazing. Yeah, it's it's an amazing sports town. Um, I love uh, my Spurs as well, but I'm a huge baseball fan. So if there's any you know major league teams out there, not mention any names, but you can't draw a fan base. Come on down here, and I'll I'll uh I'll least. <laughs> <laughs> by a couple of uh, yeah we're we're big sports town i mean spurs obviously you know take most of that uh that uh shine or that light but i am surprised yeah with all the work that we did down in the early 2000s and everything that you didn't that you didn't make it down here so you, you definitely need to put it on your bucket list yeah because i've been to every major league baseball stadium except for two and i'm halfway through the nba arenas and i'm like 75 i'm like 20 i'm 75 percent into the nfl stadiums so, like, I'm shocked that I haven't gotten to San Antonio because I've been, I've seen every Texas team, professional team, play live, except for the Spurs. Well, give us, uh, I say us loosely, but yeah, give us a, you know, a couple of, couple of weeks, a couple months here and then make some plans to come see us next year once the Mr. Uh, uh, Wimby's got a little help and uh, we'll, yes. uh, we'll rock and roll again next year. Yes, I, I think the Spurs, I mean, this is a rebuild for them right now. I mean, listen. We had, we had amazing seasons with, you know, David Robinson and Tim Duncan, the Twin Towers, and then even transferred over to Parker and Janobi and, you know, they had amazing five championships. It was time for a rebuild. It was time for a rebuild, yeah. and now we're definitely in that. Re- rebirths are always fun. Um, like I said, we're, we're, not, we're not dead yet, but uh, this no. year is moving right along. We're getting ready to jump into the uh, rodeo road trip time of the year, so... Uh, but yeah, definitely get down next year, and I promise you, if you get into San Antonio, um, Joe will buy you a, a glass of milk. For those that see the movie, that makes sense. For those that haven't, yes. you need to go <laughs> do buy him a glass of milk. I'm definitely going to hit you up. I'm, I'm, I, I, I've met a lot of filmmakers in San Antonio, so I'm definitely going to hit all my San Antonio film, um, yeah. uh, filmmakers yeah. in the as well. All right, so as you know, Jason, this is a horror channel. All right, so okay. I'm going to ask you three horror questions. Are you ready? Do I die if I get one wrong? Well, that, this, is not that, one. this is your own weird. opinion. This is your own opinion. Some weird There's stuff no wrong answer. I got you. All right, All I'll, right. I'll play the game. Okay. Um, what was the first horror movie that you watched that scared the shit out of you? Well, The Shining, I was told that that was my first. But the first thing that comes to mind is um, sitting in a in a in a trailer <laughs> in Louisiana, southern Louisiana, surrounded by pine trees, with all my kinfolk, all my cousins, and my sisters watching Children of the Corn. And then once that movie was over, had to leave that trailer, haul ass, pardon my French, across the field <laughs> to get to Grandma's house. So that's where we were sleeping. So I don't think I touched the ground because um, I was worried that Malachi was, was <laughs> right was left behind. That's the first one that pops to mind would be the uh, Children of the Corn. Children of the Corn. I love that movie as a kid. I, I was a huge Children of the Corn fan. It used to come on um, regular TV. I'm saying regular TV. But it used to come on regular. I'm old, too. I'm, I'm, I'm 41. But um, <laughs> but it used to come on um, regular TV all the time. And I used to love the original. Now, the sequels, man, that original yeah. Children of the Corn was great. Well, those. Those are those originals. It, it's hard to beat them. Every now and then, a sequel comes along that makes a little bit more sense. But just the the feeling you get for watching the first one the first time stays with you. You know, yes. it's just so. Um, but yeah, the, the original Children Born, and I wanted to watch the remake that came out a couple of years ago with a young little lady, this girl that was in it. But I missed that. But original original Children of the Corn. All right. Second question: Which horror movie? icon or character villain do you feel like you relate to the most well 
being a, a child of the 80s and my name being Jason, you can imagine who I got teased about growing up in the Jason Voorhees. <laughs> uh, I don't necessarily relate to him. I don't have mommy issues and, and, <laughs> and I can swim. Character I relate to most. Hmm, that's a good one. <sighs> well, maybe maybe it's just in my DNA. I'm going to go with, you know, Mr. Torrance from, from The Shining because I mean, he was just trying to provide for his family. He was out there trying to write a book. His wife and kid didn't understand him. He's got a lot of pressure on him. There's these people that are talking to him and just, sorry. But um, yeah, these are good questions. I mean, I've never really thought about it, but I, I'll, I'll cop out on this one and just say, yeah, Mr. Torrance uh, from The Shining. Is there, all right, one question. Is there a horror filmmaker that you've always, that you would love to work with? I don't want to put anything in the universe. I have this conversation with my my wife a lot where I don't like to I'm a baseball fan. I don't like to jinx things. You know, I don't like to talk about, you know, oh, if I ever met so and so, if I ever met so and so, or I really want to work with this person. Honestly, I couldn't give you just one. Um, I think just given the opportunity to to get in front of, you know, a famed director like an old school carpenter or, or something like that. I mean, that would be fun. But honestly, um, I'm taking any any offers that are out there. So for any four <laughs> directors that are looking for a uh, middle aged bald white dude uh, that can pull off a serial killer, <laughs> you know, hey, I'm here. He did, I'm here. You did an excellent job as a, as a serial killer too. I was like, he does that way too well. I wonder if he really is a serial killer. <laughs> well, well, no, but that's and that's the that's the thing. And I've done other horror movies. I've, I've filmed in some pretty spooky locations here in South Texas. Um, uh, director Isaac Rodriguez, another great director in South Texas. I've, I've been in front of his lens a couple of times doing horror. And and the thing with it is, it I'd say it's easier, but it's 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 simpler to almost go into a meditate meditative like state to really get to where you want to go. Now, I don't really want to do X, Y, Z to that young lady sitting at that table. But let's face it, the, the, the world that we grow up in, the society we grow up in, the things we see on a daily basis, it's easier to, to cherry pick from those things and just kind of let it nestle and stew and then just come out in, in that moment. So, um, yeah. I, I told myself and I've told my family, this, Joe, this was going to be my last horror movie. I love horror. It's just my son now, he is six. I want to do something I can show him. I can show him. Yeah. So I, I'm going to kind of maybe, as soon as I say this, step away from the horror realm for a little bit. I'll get offered another part. But uh, um, yes, please. But, um, but yeah, it's, um, it, it's easier for me to get into those darker places because unfortunately it's it's the, the world that we're, we're engulfed at that time. Unfortunately. Now, Jason, where can everyone find you? I apologize. Repeat that. I almost lost you there. Huh. Where can everyone find you? Uh, well, um, again, I don't do a lot of social media. Um, I'm kind of one of those. I try to be the, the cool hipster, the recluse, um, and just kind of stay off of those things. When it's when it's time for me to come up, when it's time for me to surface, then Joe surfaces, Jason surfaces. Um, I don't really have anything coming up in the near future. I am wrapping up on that one feature with with a uh, my friend Taylor that I mentioned earlier that'll be out later in Christmas. I'm on Facebook because let's face it, you can never get off of Facebook. It's gang like even when you want to get out, you ain't getting out of it. So, um, which reminds me, I got to check on my my Farmville village. If anybody remembers Farm. <laughs> Yes. Farm bill. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, I, I don't really do much with social between my day job, um, my dad job. Um, it takes a lot out of me. So I do surface um, when uh, the time is right, but uh, no, nothing right now. Well, listen, everyone, go into Amazon Prime and check out The Mummy Murders. It is a fun ride, and Jason does an amazing job as a minute serial killer named Joe. Jason, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. I appreciate Absolutely. you coming on. 
you know, I, I appreciate you being patient with me, working through everything, and letting me finally get here and say hi. So yes, um, and you can hear me too, which is amazing. <laughs> well, do you have do you have thirty seconds? Yes. I worked on a picture with Colin called Remy's Demons a couple of years back, and I had to audition for that role in this room, which is like my office, my spare room, what have you. And through the process of two auditions, one, I'm looking at my camera doing my audition for Colin, and a big black shadow just swarped over the top of me. Then two weeks later, I'm getting into character, and that same shadow just passed right before the lens. So, um, it was probably this room that didn't want us to talk. So hopefully all of this audio came out. If not, let's record. We'll re-record it next week. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate you, buddy. That's no problem, man. I, I, it'll be freaky if I'm doing my editing and I see a shadow pop up. You, you let me know because I was actually in this room facing that wall and the shadow came from the closet. So uh, you let me know if you need to do something. We'll, we'll submit it somewhere and win money together. Exactly, right? <laughs> okay. All right, Jason, listen, if you got anything, please hit me up. I'll, I'll love to have you back on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime, whether or not we're talking about something I'm doing or if you want to shoot the breeze about other stuff, I'm I'm game for it. And get down to San Antonio next year. I'm going to hit you up. I'm going to hit you up, and we're going to Spurs game. I'm being dead serious. Spurs, Spurs is, next year it's the Spurs. Next year it's the Cowboys. Next year it's the Oh, Evans, not everybody. the Cowboys. <laughs> not the Cowboys, man. I'm everybody. an Eagles fan. Go Eagles. Go Birds. And we'll have to watch. We'll have to watch the game next year, and we'll commentate on the game together next year. Yes, yes. <laughs> All, All right, right yeah. everyone. <laughs> well, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Thanks, buddy.